As a chemistry professor, I am, was frequently asked by students about the series Breaking Bad, which I have actually never seen. Uh, this week I watched a summary of it from this website Screen Rant, and where they did a pitch meeting and basically laid out the plot. So as a caveat to this video, I will tell you that I still have never seen a single episode, and this is purely based on their interpretation of the information and plot detailed in the seasons that series covers. Breaking Bad, in my opinion, is a bad series for many reasons. And it annoys me even more now that I know a little, as much of, about the plot as I do that students were so f fascinated with it and made connections between it and myself. While it is true that I understand the chemistry involved, all that I ever heard anyone talk about was the relationship between the financial need of Walter White to get money to pay for cancer treatment and the emotional argumentum ad misericordium that this show clearly displayed the need for universal single-payer health care. But it doesn't do any of that. In fact, as far as I can understand, there is nothing altruistic about this show, nor is it a moral or virtuous argument for anything other than the incarceration and emasculation of the main character. The show follows, if you don't know, a man named Walter White, a high school chemistry teacher who is diagnosed with terminal cancer, who goes about making drugs in order to get money to pay for his cancer treatments, yes, but also apparently so that he leaves some money behind for his fledgling family. The show, of course, jumps the shark in many ways and requires a great degree of suspension of belief. The points that it tries to make in terms of social commentary on American isms and American institutions is appropriately vague. And it offers what actually amounts to an incredibly unlikable and unrelatable protagonist, while those who are virtuous and moral are cast with dispersions and negative denotations to their character. And I'd like to address all of the those three problems with the show one by one. First off, the show requires an extreme stretch in in believability. When you look at when you first meet Walter White, he has this wife that he lives with, a sort of unremarkable job with a meager paycheck. He has a child with cystic fibrosis, and then he has a son that basically just shows up for scenes at the breakfast table, and then he comes down with a form of terminal cancer. The likelihood that all of these problems are heaped on a single person, that all of these circumstances apply, are actually pretty unlikely. Mathematically speaking, those two particular diseases do not generally run in families. Generally speaking, it would be cancer that would run in a family, or that if one of his children has cystic fibrosis, then there would be a familial awareness of the disease based on progenitors or distant relations. So the fact that this is cast as, as a nonchalant truism without any reference whatsoever to genetic propensities uh, calls into question the legitimacy of the characters as painted. It's also, again, an argumentum ad misericordium. This poor man, he doesn't make much money. Teachers are underpaid, so he's got to resort to, resort to, to cooking drugs. Are you retarded? I know people who teach college. In fact, we have an adjunct here at the college who teaches chemistry who then comes over here for extra money. He doesn't cook meth. He has other problems, but that's not one of them. The, the family is absolutely buried with, with problems and drama, and yet they never turn to family for assistance. They don't actually even turn to government. Uh, the only appeal to government that he makes is to medicine, which of course tells him that it's, his insurance doesn't cover it and forces him to pay out of pocket. And people do this all the time without, first of all, cooking drugs, let alone selling them. Because ultimately, Walter White will become a drug lord. Now, I don't know about you, but when was the last time you heard about a chemistry professor who became a drug kingpin, even in Arizona? The protagonist is a man who, although he is apparently book smart, is also street smart. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't know any chemistry professors who have the kind, uh, the kind of uh, savoir-faire necessary in order to successfully navigate both the world of academia as well as the world of downtown Arizona. That's a difficult hood. And the likelihood that he is not killed by the drugs that he's making 
caught by his brother-in-law, who is a DEA agent, or killed by the drug lords that he threatens, beats up, and kills in some, and is able to somehow persist by enlisting the help of a junkie partner who's, a, who's one of his former students. Yeah, this is pretty damn unbelievable. Going back to this brother-in-law, you know, I don't know a lot of DEA agents, but I do know some federal law enforcement officers, and I do work with some uh, when I'm volunteering on the mountain on the weekends. And the likelihood that this brother-in-law of his is unable to put things together means that either the DEA is completely inept or the writers have no clue how the DEA works. Having applied myself to work for the DEA before I got this job, I am aware of some of the questions that they ask in the vetting process and the fact that they were actually concerned about my abilities because I didn't know anything about recognizing drugs. So the likelihood that they have hired somebody who is unaware of any of the signs is pretty damn small. They didn't hire me. I'm pretty sure they wouldn't hire this guy either. Add to that the amount of money and unbroken success that Walter White has over the five seasons of this show, and you have pretty much beaten the odds so much that he might as well come to Vegas, put money in a casino, and walk away a millionaire. Because a man with as much luck as he has doesn't need to resort to, to cooking and selling drugs. He could have just come here and gambled and won too. And it would have made for a much less convoluted plot and a much less drawn out story. The show attempts to sell itself as a commentary on social issues. The primary argument is made that to justify single-payer health care because cancer is so expensive and so arduous, especially for our poor educators, that they can't pay for it. Now, in reality, um, this is a circumstance that doesn't happen. I have relatives who work in healthcare, and although, yes, these things do cost a lot of money, hospitals do not refuse service, and the fact that he chose not to go and get it and incur the debt shows that he is incapable of making correct decisions for his health care and the disposition of his family's future. It shows that the only people in our world who resort to desperation are good people, that they're virtuous, that the ends justify the means, that he's just trying to take care of his family, and if the government would only care about people, none of this would ever happen. Well, I got news for you. There's a lot of people cooking and selling drugs who don't have cancer. In fact, this is probably so statistically irrelevant and unlikely that you would probably be unable to find anyone in the real world who resorted to cooking and selling drugs in order to pay for his cancer costs. Because this is a dangerous world. Chemistry itself is dangerous as it is. And I know there's a scene, because I've seen it in the previews, where they actually blow up the trailer they're cooking in. And that doesn't attract any attention, nor does it have any health consequences. Now, these are dangerous caustic chemicals. And if you were near an explosion, he would have probably needed hospital care and those doctors are not stupid. Even I can tell by looking at a person if they're on crystal meth. It attempts to make the argument that altruistic crime is okay. The argumentum ad misericordium that he's only doing it because he loves his family and the government slash re read Republicans don't give a flying pinwheel. This is the predilection to legal plunder described in the book written by Friedrich Bastiat called The Law, where people will justify illegal behaviors on the auspice of altruistic intentions. That intentions are all that matter. Well, if it, intentions are all that matter, then you have to judge me by my intentions, and therefore no one is at fault and no one is a villain, because of course nobody will go out there and say, well, my intentions were to rob, pilfer, and plunder my we out my Weasley guts. That's only something you hear in movies starring Johnny Depp. The third argument made by the series, and the third weakness with this series, is the fact that the protagonist is actually an evil man, and all of the good, virtuous characters are either painted as buffoons or vilified by the script writers. Walter actually has a fairly supportive wife, who is painted so much as a shrew and an ingrate and a... An untrusting, I'm trying to think of a word that's not a pejorative, but anyway, so untrusting that the, the people who watched this show came to hate her, 
more than the husband who cooked and sold drugs. Ponder that for a moment, that his wife is a bigger villain and more hated. That tells you that the writing is good and persuasive. But in the real world, what person in their right mind thinks that a woman who is trying to figure out what's going on with her husband, who is breaking the law, is worse than the husband who is breaking the law? Okay? Breaking bad? No, breaking the law. This is a show about a man who turns to crime as a solution. We call those criminals. The wife becomes hated. Then there's her brother, the co completely incompetent and inept DEA agent who's apparently such a big moron that he can't figure out what Walter is doing. He doesn't notice any of the smells, the chemicals, the burns, the physical changes that would, that would be caused. Of course, going bald and the color of his beard changing are the only things that happen, but I haven't never made drugs, nor have I actually ever taken any drugs, but I do know that, because I know how they work as a biochemist, that there would have been physiological and behavioral changes occasioned by the exposure to both the ingredients as well as the outcome. Not to mention his behavioral changes as he begins selling it and then competing with local drug lords. I mean, you would have noticed a great psychological change. Any DEA agent worth his salt, worth a badge, and worth a job would have been suspicious. The protagonist actually even goes so far as to kill people, and the bigger problem here is he is helping people who are addicted to drugs to start getting addicted and to feed their addictions. At the very least, this is codependency, and, but in all other ways, it's criminal, and there is no virtue in using the adversary's methods to achieve the father's plan. Or in other words, there is no justification for, for evil deeds to create a good outcome. You do not make virtuous ends only come from virtuous means. If you try to make a cake with spoiled ingredients, you will not get a delicious cake. But that is precisely the argument that they're making here is, well, as long as everything turns out all right, it's okay. But in the end, it doesn't turn out all right. He doesn't die. And it devolves from paying for his cancer treatment and leaving money to his family into a selfish criminal romp to make his boring life more tolerable as he marches inevitably toward the grave. So they never wrap up the original story arc. He doesn't get take the money and go get cancer treatment. He doesn't leave money for his family. In fact, basically the family is left in the dust and becomes this sort of punchline footnote to the story. Like I said, the son just appears at the dinner table. The daughter is used to make you all feel bad for him and his family because she has a terminal disease. I think it's a daughter. I can't even remember because I haven't seen it. And the, and the woman is a shrew that everybody hates. But, and the hero is a drug dealer. I don't know about you, but I, there are a few other shows where they're making heroes out of villains. This is a kind of thing that you see in revisionist history where people who had incredibly bad motives incredibly bad methods are beatified because they achieved something good in the end. Now contrast this to the story of Columbus, for example, because Columbus had good morals and motives, but Columbus is not recognized for trying to find an alternative route to the Indies. He is only regarded for the fact that he brought disease and imperialism to the natives. Well, I don't know about you, but Walter White brought disease and imperialism to the natives because he put them under control of a foreign substance and he made them all sick. Everybody's sick. This show is sick. Breaking Bad is bad. It's about breaking the law and becoming bad. And I don't care how they play things. I am so glad having seen Screen Rant's pitch meeting for this that I never wasted any more time than five minutes of my life watching the pitch meeting on finding out what this show is about. Now that's my caveat, because I've never seen it. But if the screen rant can be taken at face value, this is a show that never should have been made, let alone watched, because it makes heroes out of criminals, and criminals out of heroes. It appeals to pity, to justify selfishness, hedonism, narcissism, and criminality. And because of its popularity, perhaps it's no wonder that our country is devolving as it is. So that's my screen rant. I appreciate you listening. Go find good entertainment. And 
I've learned from this that it's good to not get on the bandwagon with new shows because they very, very rarely are what they claim to be. And certainly this one ended in a much contrarian fashion to the original premise and has been used to abuse people and their sensibilities for probably political ends. As you're out there, remember to make good decisions. Remember to look at things with an air of introspection. What are they trying to sell you? It's always good advice to watch for that. What's in it for them? What are they trying to, to teach you? And is it what they, s look beyond the words, look at the actions, because the things that they do will drown out the words that they say almost every time. Anyway, good luck, be wise, or what can I say more? Godspeed.